Hello everybody, this is Tim here again, here with my review for The Amazing Leprechaun 2. <laughs> Starring Warwick Davis once again, and a bunch of other actors who I have no fucking idea who they are. Um, so, like, I, like I've said in my other videos, I don't do a lot of research on films uh, after I watch them before I review them. So I'm just going to be honest, I don't know who any of these actors are, except for the old man who plays the character of Morty in the film. I recognize him in one other movie, the film Vamp, with uh, Robert Rustler. But um, just to jump into this film, this is Leprechaun 2, even though it has no connection whatsoever with the first movie, story-wise. Just to jump into the film, you got Warwick Davis back as the Leprechaun, who in this film uh, is a thousand years old instead of 600, or at least he's a thousand at the beginning of the movie. And for some reason, when a Leprechaun turns a thousand, he's able to select a wife then, and I'm like, okay. There's no there's no information to, to why things are the way they are in this film. We just have to accept it, and some stuff I'm okay with, other stuff I'm like, no WDF. But uh, anyway, so the Leprechaun's in the middle of the forest. Um, he's got a slave with him. Uh, this dude who stole his gold, another Leprechaun's basically made him his bitch. And uh, he goes to introduce him to this woman who the, lepre who the Leprechaun wants to marry. Um, why does the Leprechaun even want to get married? I mean, he would have to share his shit with this person. So, why would a leprechaun even want to share? I mean, unless he just, you know, loves pussy more than gold, but, well, I guess I could buy that. I mean, <laughs> he's a man after all. <laughs> but anyway. So, let's come to find out the, the girl that the leprechaun wants to marry is the daughter of the, the slave of the leprechaun. And the leprechaun gets her to sneeze three times, and if somebody says, God bless you, well, I mean, if the leprechaun gets her to sneeze three times, she becomes his bride. And if somebody says, God bless you, before the third sneeze, or I guess after it or something, um, then the spell doesn't work. And so the slave says it, he takes off running, and the leprechaun fucking floats him up in the air, snaps his neck. Decent little scene here. Skip it. <laughs> oh, before I forget, the girl who is the slave's daughter, she like runs towards the, the body of her dead father. Like bends down at him and then looks, uh, I mean, looks down at him like this, yes, and then raises straight up and is like screams at the camera like ah! <laughs> it's so stupid and over the top. <laughs> but anyway, so we skip to the future. Now the woman who played the slave's daughter at the beginning of the movie also plays the descendant of the slave's daughter. Her name is Bridget. This girl cannot act at all. She is horrible. Horrible beyond all human comprehension. She's she's not ugly. She's very attractive. <laughs> so I guess that's at least a bonus for the film. But she's a horrible actress. She sucks so bad. Um, in the, char uh, the character of Cody, who is her boyfriend in the film, and his uncle Morty, they're like con artists. They're like going and ripping people off and shit. They're the highlight of the movie, them two and Warwick Davis. Um, the, they're basically the two leads, Cody and Morty are. And they're... They're fun to watch. I enjoy these two actors, and at least in this film. They're not anything amazing or nothing, but they're enjoyable to watch. Morty's like an old alcoholic all the time, and um, every time uh, Cody wants to go on a date with Bridget, he, you know, he always has to end up doing work instead because Morty's too fucking drunk to do it himself when he should be the one doing it. They got like this real shitty thing where they trick people to taking this tour around town. Uh... Where they pretend like they're going to take them to all these haunted places and sites and stuff. Um, so, of course, Bridget gets mad because Cody has to blow off their date. So he can do... So he can drive people around town in a shitty make-believe tour. So he can con them out of like 400 bucks, I guess. Um, of course, uh, the leprechaun lives in a tree at like the old Houdini place in town or whatever. Um... He comes out of the tree, and you got a little humorous scene here where he, like, finds his bum out there, and he, like, wraps him to the ground. I mean, he pulls him to the ground with, like, tree roots or whatever and uh, rips his gold tooth out. Decent little scene. Nothing amazing, but enjoyable. Um, of course, he lets the guy go after that, which shows the leprechaun's not really bloodthirsty. He just doesn't like people still enough of him. He's still a mischievous little bastard, though. <laughs> but anyway... Warwick Davis, once again, is the leprechaun. He's fine. There's nothing wrong with his performance. Um, so the leprechaun goes to get her to claim her as his bride. He goes to her house while Cody's there, like, and they're talking. 
Um, and then fucking, there's like this dude who has a crush on Bridget. He's like trying to hit on her. And so the leprechaun makes an illusion that Brid Bridget is like standing in the garage topless and wanting the guy to like kiss on her tits, I guess. But it's like the most obvious body double I've ever seen in a film, ever. <laughs> so <laughs> they're not even the actress's boobs. They're still nice boobs, but they're not the actress's boobs. And so the the guy goes to kiss her, and it turns out it's like a big fucking fan, a blade or whatever, and he puts his face to it. You see like the shadow of him getting killed. It's an okay scene, and then the leprechaun like comes out from hiding. He's like, was it as good for you as it was for me? Like talking in Bridget's voice. That was kind of mildly amusing. Um, um, he attacks him. He fucking whacks the shit out of Cody, knocks him down. One of Leprechaun's gold coins gets knocked out of his hand by Bridget. Manages to roll right into Cody's hand. Miraculously. Um, and then you find out in this film that the Leprechaun can be killed by wrought iron. So basically a poker. You just stab him with it. <laughs> if only they would have known that in the first film. But anyway. The uh, continuity or continuity or whatever between this film and the last one is, uh, or is utter shit. The continuity between this film and the last one, I mean, is what I'm trying to say, is utter shit. There is no continuity. This might as well be a completely different leprechaun. And in my opinion, it is. But anyway. So, he throws like a, a poker at the leprechaun. The leprechaun catches it in his hand. It like fucking burns his hand. Uh, and then the leprechaun disappears with Bridget. Of course, Cody has to save her. He goes to, uh, he goes to, uh, to his uncle Morty. And the one thing I like in the film is how funny it is. I like the character of Morty because he's like ripping everybody off. This dude shows up to deliver pizza to his house and he waits like the extra couple minutes before opening the door so the pizza will be free. And he opens his door and gets a free pizza and he goes, now if I can just figure out how to get free beer. <laughs> I thought this guy was funny. So, Leprechaun shows up, whacks the shit out of Morty, and then you get this stupid scene where the Leprechaun's like, just give me the coin back, lad. And I'll I'll give you Bridget back. And the kid starts act Cody starts actually getting ready to hand the leprechaun the coin. And I'm like, You actually believe this little motherfucker? I mean, that's like stupid ass characterville USA right there, man. There's hardly anything this guy can do to redeem his stupidity after that. But uh then Morty shows up, knocks a big fucking uh, bookshelf down on top of the leprechaun, I guess. And they managed to make it out of there. Um, they go to a bar, um, then you get this stupid jump scare where you know it's not a fake scare. I mean, there's a lot of fake scares with Leprechaun in this film. Once again, they don't really know how to le make the Leprechaun scary, so they keep trying these little jump scares all the time. They get so annoying. And you got one where it's like, you think it's a, the Leprechaun. Obviously, you know it's not the Leprechaun walking into the bathroom while Cody's in the bathroom at the bar. It turns out it's this other, like, little person. Who is like dressed up as a leprechaun because it's St. Patrick's Day? I'm like, well, didn't see that one coming. But anyway, then leprechaun actually does show up in the bar, and so Morty challenges him to a drinking game, which I this I like this. Challenges him to a drinking game, gets him so fucking drunk that he he's just getting ready to like pass out. I found this entertaining. And I thought this was fun, and then he starts like trying to levitate an ashtray, and then uh, it drops, and then Morty's like, didn't anybody ever tell you not to drink and levitate? And all at once, the jukebox comes on, and then Morty looks back at it, and then Leprechaun fucking knocks his brains out with a bottle of alcohol. I thought that was funny. Of course, Leprechaun gets away. Um, but I enjoyed this with them getting the Leprechaun drunk and everything. I thought that was funny. Of course, Bridget is in the Leprechaun's home, which is inside a tree at the old Houdini mansion. <laughs> and inside the tree or whatever, she keeps trying to escape, but uh, the Leprechaun's place keeps fucking with her. I thought some of this stuff was mildly amusing. Like, she would walk into one room, and then, uh, it, she would then walk out the door and wind right back up in the room she started in. Or she would throw rocks on the ground and try to make a trail to know where she's been. And then the rocks would start disappearing. I kind of like this. This was mildly entertaining, this stuff was. Um, but, pretty much, after that, Leprechaun's got, like, a hangover, and he's drinking, like, what it looks like, like 20, probably 20 or 15 or something like that cups of espresso. And then one of the there's this guy that work that works in there, and he's like one of the dudes from Mad TV, or used to be when it was on. And uh, 
he keeps like fucking with the leprechaun, and he's like, uh, I'm a pay up man so I can get out of here. And he's like, so, and the leprechaun's like, so it's my gold you be wanting. He's like, well, I prefer cash, but you're probably a little short. I thought that was funny. This guy made me laugh. He's one of the saving graces of this film, just his minor appearance here. So Leprechaun gets pissed off as hell at this guy, stabs like knives down into his hands, I believe, or forks, and pins him to a table and then turns like the, the espresso maker on him and shoots the hot air in his face. A little bit of a little bit of gore here when the guy's like falls down face first on the desk. His face is like melted. Um that's okay scene. Not bad. Um Pretty much, they decide they're going to capture the leprechaun because Rod Iron they know can hurt him. So they go to this place, and they get this safe, and they're going to try to capture him in the safe. They go there, the leprechaun shows up. Uh, before that, though, Morty gets uh, stopped by a security guard at the place, and he's like, don't, and Morty's like, man, I'll pay you if you let me go. And the dude's like, don't try anything now. I've had 60 hours of combat training. And then he, then he uncuffs Morty so he can reach his wallet. And then he, like, when cop gets distracted, Morty knocks him out. Uh, and then he goes, should have had 65. I thought that shit was funny. That was funny. Um, of course, the leprechaun shows up. It's ready to knock the shit out of Morty. Cody's, uh, Cody tells him to come after him. He comes after him, goes through, like, this little dog door in the door. And, of course, the safe is, like, right in front of the dog door. So they... Captured the leprechaun inside the safe. Everything's pretty much solved here. They got the little fucker. He's not getting out. He can't get out unless someone lets him out. And, of course, Morty turns on Cody, and he's like, Oh, yeah, I got this little bastard now. I'm going to get me some three wishes, baby. Money, here we come. <laughs> and he's like, I want you gold, you little fuck. And then the leprechaun's like, You sure? Are you sure that's what you want? And then Morty's like, Oh, yeah, I'm sure. And so he gets it. And this is probably the best scene in the movie when the gold starts like, the pot of gold starts like, coming inside of like a, a morphing inside of uh, Morty's stomach and it's like sticking out and everything and it's a good effect for a low budget film of course he lets the leprechaun out of the safe because uh, he's in so much pain he wants the leprechaun to help him the leprechaun gets out and then fucking takes his claws and rips like through Morty's stomach and pulls the pot of gold out but you don't see any gore there's no gore or blood or nothing and I'm like why why not why this is a B movie. If you want to do something that's entertaining and creative, like you just did with how the gold came into the guy's stomach, you know, finish it off with some icing on the cake with some blood and gore when he rips it out of the guy's stomach. But no, they just say fuck you. And I'm like, well, fuck you too. The scene sucks. <laughs> but anyway, or at least the end result of it does. And Morty's like, help me. And then Leprechaun looks at him and goes, love to, friend, but you're all out of wishes. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Of course, Cody gets away. The cop shows back up. He's like, he thinks Cody's killed everybody, uh, or at least killed Morty. He's going to arrest Cody. Leprechaun shows up, fucking runs the cop over with like a little vehicle, like little doom buggy or whatever, or go-kart, I mean. They, the Leprechaun's got a go-kart and runs the cop over with it. Um, and then he like runs towards him again, but you don't see him hit him. You just see like the Leprechaun's face going, ah ha ha. <laughs> and of course, it's kind of a lackluster death scene, to be honest. Nothing to ride home about. Um, definitely not something I would ever come close to putting in the top ten horror movie death scenes of all time. Um, and then this, the movie was like mildly entertaining. It was like from decent to to okay to maybe going towards good for a B movie. But this right here is what almost completely. This is right here is what kills the movie. This shit right here kills it. The Leprechaun sees Cody and he can kill Cody and take his coin back. But now, in this film, the Leprechaun drives towards him with a go-kart and goes straight through him and comes out like the other side. Decent effect for a low-budget film. But now, almost all of a sudden, the Leprechaun can't kill Cody because he has his gold coin. He can't just kill him and take it. He can't do any harm to him at all. And I'm thinking, well, what about all the other times he was going to beat the shit out of him in the movie uh, before now when Cody had the gold coin? What, did this shit just not take effect till now or something? What? I don't, I don't get this. And this is stupid. This is a stupid rule. That the leprechaun can't harm you as long as you got the coin. Just keep the coin and just <laughs> never give it to him. And there's not a fucking thing he can do about it. There you go. That's it. Go get your woman. Just leave. He can't do shit. <laughs> anyway, that's stupid. Stupid as fuck. And that all that right there made me just want to hate the movie. And so, of course, he can't kill Cody, so he just disappears. Cody knows where the leprechaun's home is. He goes into the fucking tree. 
goes in there with the wrought iron poker. He's going to take the leprechaun out. And then um, he gets in there. Um, he gets some more little jump scenes with the leprechaun jumping out of holes and shit. And I'm thinking, not more. This would be kind of neat because it's in the leprechaun's home and he can just pop out anywhere. But they've already overdone the leprechaun jump scares in the movie up until now. So this shit right here is just icing on the cake, annoying as fuck. But anyway, you kind of get an okay scene with the leprechaun, like brings a dead skeleton to life. It's like fighting Cody. It's the, like the skeleton of the slave from the beginning of the movie. That's an okay scene. Nothing amazing. Um, then you get uh, like Cody makes it away from the skeleton, and he like gets trapped in all these like bars and stuff, and they're like cutting all over his body. And this is kind of an okay scene. Leprechaun's like, "Give me the coin, lad, and I set you free." No, uh, that's kind of an okay scene. I enjoyed that. I didn't mind that one. Of course, the leprechaun manages to make it there where Bridget is. Bridget, uh, she's in there. Her and Cody try to get away. They keep running through these passageways, and they try every one of them, but keep winding up in the same room over and over. This, this is an okay scene. And of course, uh, the fucking uh, Bridget disappears, and then Cody sees her, and she's like, "Just, just give me the coin, Cody, and I'll let you go." Uh, I know. I mean, she doesn't say that. She's just like, "Give me the coin." You know, we just leave it here, and he won't follow us anymore. And obviously, you know it's the leprechaun. I don't even think the filmmaker even tries to hide the fact that this is the leprechaun. Of course, she kisses him, and then she take, he gives her the coin. She transforms into the leprechaun, who has a massive ego in this film, unlike the other one. In this film, he keeps thinking about how intelligent he is for some reason. He keeps bragging about it anyway. And um, and then he like the real Bridget shows up, and uh, he takes like Cody's wrought iron poker. And like rams it into Cody's chest and Cody falls down. And you can see it sticking right out of his chest. Now the reason I bring this up is you can see the poker sticking right out of Cody's chest. He's fucking dead. He ain't coming back from that. But then he like hops up. And uh, you find out the coin he gave the leprechaun. Or the when he was like when the leprechaun was pinned to be Bridget. Was like a fake milk chocolate coin. And then, the, and then he stabs the leprechaun in the gut with the poker. Okay. And I'm thinking. So the leprechaun couldn't harm him when he had the coin. But then he stabs him with the poker, and it goes straight into him. But then the, uh, he suddenly revives, and the poker's no longer in his gut, and he's able to stab the leprechaun with it? I'm thinking, how the fuck does that work? These rules make no sense. They're not explained at all. Uh, I need a guidebook for all this shit uh, or something. <laughs> they add in a lot of stupid like shit in this one. Well, not a lot of stupid shit, but the biggest, well, at least one big, huge, stupid shit thing, mistake, I would say, is the leprechaun not being able to harm anybody who has his gold. That's dumb as shit. I'm sorry, it is. But anyway, so he, Cody stabs the leprechaun with the poker. The leprechaun fucking blows up. Once again, they save their budget for the, most of their budget for the final uh, special effects scene here with the leprechaun exploding. And it's... It's an enjoyable little scene. He blows up. Cody and Bridget make it out. And then Bridget's acting. This actress is so horrible. Uh, Cody, like, kisses her. And she's like, so whose kiss did you like better? You know, like, mine and Leprechaun's. And he's like, well, I gotta think about it. And she's like, ha 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 Like, trying to act like she's laughing. And she's so fucking terrible. I mean, it's unbelievable. And then he's got the gold coin in his hand. And she's like, are you gonna keep it? And he's like, no, trust me, it's not worth it. And he throws it down. Is this supposed to be like some kind of greed is bad thing? I mean, it's like one gold coin and Leprechaun's dead. He's not going to come back after you just because you have it. He's fucking dead. So why don't you just take the, the coin and just get out of there? What, is this trying to be like some kind of message or something? It makes no sense. No fucking sense. <laughs> because there was never any other fucking message in the movie. And now, movie, you're trying to pull it out of your ass or something. I don't know what you're doing here, but it sucks. Leprechaun's dead. Keep the coin. Go buy a house. Whatever. But anyway. So that, then that's pretty much that's the end of the movie. So for this film, I'd give it one and a half stars. Um, I still don't hate this movie. It's worse than the first film. The cast is worse. Uh, the, the cast is worser in this film, I mean, than the first film. Um, but, uh, but Cody and Morty, they're enjoyable. Bridget. God help me. Uh, but anyway, Warren Davis is fine once again. And what this movie would have wound up being just an okay film, 
just similar to the first one, like an okay time waster, I guess, if you like, if you like the B movies, which I don't mind them, really. It would have been an okay time waster like the first one, but because of the stupid add-in rule of the Leprechaun not being able to kill people, it has his gold, it automatically makes this film a clusterfuck. But anyway, this is a one and a half star film. I'll see you guys again with part three, which is my favorite of the series, and I know for a fact is better than this one. So I'll see you guys again with Leprechaun 3, where he goes to Vegas, baby. <laughs> which actually makes sense to me, because it's a, a greedy fucking place. But anyway, I'll see you guys again with Leprechaun 3.